when uh, male dominance in our species was suppressed chemically by psilocybin in the diet. It was still there, <coughs> hardwired in the genes, but chemically suppressed by an orgiastic religious style that had everybody taking mushrooms at the new and full moon and then having sex in a heap, basically. This made it impossible for men to trace lines of male paternity. That's a consequence of an orgiastic uh, society. And a kind of paradise evolved. And it was during that paradisical interlude that language, theater, altruism, metaphysics, poetry, dance, uh, religion, all of the functions that we equate with unique humanness evolved under the aegis of a near symbiosis with, sim with psilocybin, mushrooms. And then, and this all was happening in Africa, then through climatic upheaval, drying of the African continent, the mushrooms disappeared and God forbid the old wiring reasserted itself. It must have been hell on earth. It must have been similar to what we're living through. It must have been an era of incredible brutalization when people stopped caring for each other. People stopped having group sex. They started fighting over women, fighting over territory, bashing each other's brains out, appointing leaders, uh, uh, developing weapons, the entire sick set of pathological institutions that leads to our dilemma was evolved in the wake of the invention of agriculture and the abandonment of nomadism and so forth and so on. And this is why I think we're so funny on the subject of drugs because we are literally the children of a drug. There wouldn't be human beings on this planet had there not been this hominid mushroom interaction over a very, very long period of time. The reason we addict so easily to so many substances and the reason people destroy their lives with various addictions is we have an itch that we just can't scratch and we try everything. And I maintain that you'll keep itching and you'll keep scratching till you come to this very narrow family of hallucinogens, the tryptamine hallucinogens. Then the itch stops because you are restored to the archaic dynamic in which we created the most noble social systems that we have ever lived under. The archaic, nomadic, shamanic, goddess-worshipping world of the dawn time. And history is a fall away from that, exactly as these monotheistic religions uh, insist. The fall into history. And I see then this emergent end of the world, post-history, millenarian culture as an attempt to reconnect with that archaic authenticity that was the birthplace of intellect, of poetry, of beauty, of love, and of altruism. Okay. These are great questions. I wish I had more time. Here's uh, one, please define intelligence. Strangely enough, I was thinking about this today, as I, I can't even remember why, but I produced a definition. Uh, it, I, it's a kind of a cribbing from Whitehead. Whitehead defined understanding in the following way. He said, understanding is the apperception of pattern as such. That's all. For instance, in this room, there are many patterns. Where the men are, where the women are. Where the over 40s are, where the under 40s are. Where the wealthy and the poor are. Each of these patterns, if you can see it, tells you more about the situation. And presumably, there are an infinite number of these 
informative patterns. So I would define uh, intelligence as Whitehead defined understanding. Intelligence is the apperception of pattern as such. And the more of pattern, of the pattern, and the more patterns that you perceive, the more intelligent you are. Of course, these patterns must actually be there, otherwise you're delusory, and that's a different issue. And then I'll do, uh, I'll do one more here. Aww. <laughs> you don't want to go fast through them. <laughs> 